you that this is called the, the moment that turns your values upside down. And this is from an article about quantum changes. Men and women rank their most highly valued personal characteristics before and after a quantum change. So they did this long-term study, uh, studying people from over 15, 20 year period. All right. This is like, uh, uh, men were asked this question, you know, uh, to uh, uh, rank your most highly valued personal characteristics. Okay, now this is before a quantum, this is while they're in the morning of their life. All right, so this is like ambition time. This is what men said were the f five, there's about 15 of them here, but I'm just gonna give five. The first is, the first thing, the highest thing on a, on a man's list before um, one of these quantum moments in the morning of his life was wealth, accumulation of wealth, making money, okay? Second was a sense of adventure. Third was a sense of achievement, being able to achieve, which is one of those things about the ego. The fourth was my personal pleasure, pleasure, just pursuing pleasure, getting drunk, getting laid, getting what, all of that. And um, fin finally, uh, to be respected. This was like, yeah, be respected by the, what other people think of me. So there's the top five qualities. Now, after one of these changes that I just described, the one that, that sent me, you know, just away from alcohol for the rest of my life. Um, after one of these experiences, and they talk a lot about what these experiences are like, the first quality was spirituality. It went from, well, which wasn't even on the list of the, of the top 15 before that. So it's like my relationship to God, my relationship to, you know, the highest place, which I could say for me is truly the most important thing going on in my life today. Is, and, and, and the when I do my own radio show and people call in from all over the world, it's always, you know, make your relationship not so much to God as an external, but to the highest part of yourself, to the part of you that uh, allowed yourself to show up here in the first place. And if you would have just left it alone, it all would have been just fine. Right? So spirituality was first. Second was personal peace for men to feel a sense of peace because they're always anxious and worried and depressed and so on. That wasn't even on the list before. The third was family, taking care of my family, providing for my family. The fourth was God's will. And the fifth was honesty, which, again, wasn't even on. Those weren't even listed before. All right? So you can see like a, a real shift now has taken place. Quantum experience, morning of the life. You've been trained by the ego. All of the things that you have to do, accumulate, defeat, win, be better than, achieve, you know, and, and have a great reputation and, and so on. To um, the most important thing in my life is, is my relationship to, to my spirit. And, and I can tell you that when I sat down to write, you'll see it when you believe it, which was, which was the shift for me. I had moved away now from psychology and all of that. It was so freeing to write that. And I, read, I go back and, and read some of the stuff that I wrote you know, over 20 years ago now when I was moving into this, into, into, into this part of my life. And I'm so excited and happy and proud of it. I'm happy with, with what I did in that more ambitious time in my life as well. I think Erroneous Owns is like one of the classic books out there. But it's, it's just it's like a scratching of the surface of what a person can become, in my opinion. So, but imagine making the shift, making, making such a shift so that 20 years later, when the same men were asked the question after they had gone through this, they had, uh, they had a total different set of values and were running their life on the basis of that. And the irony of that, the irony of that, because I can give my own life as an example, is that all of the stuff that I wanted and chased after and demanded and, and needed, and all of that comes into my life in, in bigger and bigger and larger and larger amounts. So all the things that on number one, on the first list, yeah. wealth and adventure right. and all that. All of that is there in space. Going after yeah. it. You but know, the, the thing of it is, you're no longer attached to it. Yeah. See, yeah, it, there's, there's just, you, you've let go. Meaning doesn't mean that you don't enjoy all of the ambitious things that you had. I enjoy the wonderful places that, where I live and the adventure I have. I travel all over the world. I touch people's lives in a million ways. I, I'm, I'm writing books. I've, I've got, you know, endless numbers of friends. I have great family, all of that kind all of stuff. All stuff that could have yeah. been what you were after in the, the Yeah, world. because I was attached to that, you see. 
And, and it's, the, it's the attachment, it's the letting go of the attachment, and, and then you just let it flow. That's what the Tao teaches. It's just like everything just flows. But, but for women, yeah. now, before, women being asked the question before a quantum moment, what is the most important thing in your life? In the morning of a person's life, a woman's life, her number one thing is family, fitting in, taking care of being a good daughter, being a good mother, being all of that. Again, nothing in this world wrong with it, but when you have one of those quantum moments, it's just not enough. It's like there's, there's more that I know that I'm here to do, that I'm here for, whatever. And that, whatever that is, can vary in every single person that's out there. The second was the sense of independence, feeling independent as a person. That was their highly valued personal care. The third was a career, you know, having a, getting a career position. Fourth was fitting in. And fifth was attractiveness, being attractive. Okay, so those were the five qualities in the morning of a woman's life. After one of these quantum moments, and there are many of these for women that I, like I described earlier, the first is my own personal growth as a person. That's the number one quality now, 15, 18 years later. Personal growth, growing as a human being. You know, it's like uh, rather than just staying stunted in, in some role that had been defined for me. The next was self-esteem feeling positive about myself. That wasn't even on the, uh, in the first 15 before that. The third was a sense of spirituality, closeness to God. The fourth was happiness, my own happiness, and fifth was generosity. So a major shift now takes place in a, in a person's life after one of these quantum moments. Do you have to have that, that dramatic quantum moment in order to make that shift? No, I mean, that can be a very mild thing for some people. Some people, it's just an overwhelming feeling. These quantum shifts can take, you know, like many, 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 many different forms. I've asked people in audiences to come forward and, and give me examples of, of quantum moments, you know, in your life. And they range. I mean, they range from, I just had, a, I just had an insight, you know. I, I, it happened to me in a dream. I awoke from a dream, and it was just so real and so clear that this was a good... Uh, it was a synchronistic event. I mean, I was, watch, I was thinking about this and all that, and somebody came on television, and they started talking about it, and I exactly knew. Another one, I get it on my radio show all the time. They'll hear me talking to somebody on my radio show about, about this, and just, just listening to another person, hearing another person's story and all of that, it triggered that kind of a thing but what it generally the transition is 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 preceded by an awareness that I think everyone has if you if you if you're really skillful at, at, at asking people about themselves um, you can get it out of them that that they know they know that there's that there's more to their life they know that there is I bet if I ask you about filmmaking and so on you could probably go go to something inside of you that you, maybe you were doing something else, delivering newspapers, who knows what the hell you were doing. And all of a sudden, it's like it began to hit. Maybe a film that you saw, maybe, you know, something, whatever. And, and that's it. You, you know, you're hooked and you're, and you're moving in that direction. And, 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 you know, and meaning now becomes like the, the, the dynamic or drawing force in your life. So your ambition now becomes to, to fulfill your dharma, to fulfill your destiny. That's, that becomes, and, it, and it's like, you know, for me, I know that if I were taken this afternoon, um, I have a pretty, uh, you know, I, I would have a pretty good resume, you know, and, uh, and, and a lot of credits and all of that, 30-some books and, and all of that. But um, there's a part of me that, that knows that there's, there's more coming. There's something, there's, uh, you know. And so it's like, have I lost ambition? No, I haven't lost ambition. I've lost attachment to the ego identification of what ambition is. I've lost that completely. So you don't get lazy. In fact, you get more active. You get busier than your resume gets bigger. You know, the, the, your list of accomplishments get, grows and grows and grows. But you're not attached to it any longer. You just, there's like, there's no hanging on to it. There's no, no need for it. It's not, so you're living in process rather than outcome. You know, outcome is when you're doing what you're doing so that you'll get the accolades or the money or the rewards of some kind or, or, or the Emmy or whatever it is, you know, you get that. Whereas, you know, the, the, great, the great actors, the great, they, they, they're not thinking about getting an Academy Award while they're doing the acting any more than Michael Jordan is thinking about, you know, getting above the rim when he's, uh, when he's out there playing, you know. He's just in the moment, in the moment, and perfected the, the business of being in the moment. 
um, and and not, and not attached to the, to any of the stuff. And then when you ask him how he does what he does, he says, "I haven't got an idea. I have no idea." Which is when people ask me, "How do I get in front of an audience and, and speak to an audience and keep them entertained and live?" I I don't know how to teach that. I can't teach that, you know, any more than you can teach filmmaking. A lot of people want to know about making the complete shift into meaning. A lot of it is about attachment and detaching yourself from the things that you used to think you absolutely had to have, and that the more you detach yourself, there's an old, there's an old story told of a, of a, two kittens, or a, a kitten and an old cat in the alley. Have you heard that story? Mm -hmm. And um, the kitten is on the in the alley, and he's chasing his tail, like you see kittens do, chasing and chasing and chasing and chasing. And and the old cat looks at him and says, uh, "What are you doing?" And he said, "Well, I'm." I'm chasing after my tail. He said, but why would you do that? He said, well, I just returned from cat philosophy school. And in cat philosophy school, we learned that there are two things that are important for a cat. One is that happiness is the most important thing for a cat. And two, that happiness is located in my tail. So what I've discovered and decided to do is that I'm going to chase after it. Once I get a hold of it and get a grip on it, I'll have a, I'll have a lock on eternal happiness. And the old alley cat looks at him and says, you know, I, I really have, I haven't had a chance to go to philosophy school like you. I've lived in the alleys most of my life. Just, He said, but it's amazing. I've discovered the, those same truths for me, that happiness is the most important thing in the world for a cat. And I've noticed that it is located in my tail. He said, the only difference, I think, between you and I is that I've noticed that when I do go about my business and do the things that are really important to me, it follows after me wherever I go. It chases after you wherever you go. And that's really a very hard message for those of us who grew up in the ego dominated I have to get more I have to get uh, I have to get ahead of other people I evaluate myself on the basis of my achievements and so on to believe that something could chase after you you know and so the the issue becomes and I think this is a really significant part of this uh, of, of, of moving into meaning in your life is um, when is it most likely that one of these quantum shifts is going to take place when are you going to get this otherworldly message or when are you going to get the 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 wake-up call the internal wake-up call however it manifests uh, how's that going to show up and I, I discovered it years and years ago well not that many years ago seven years ago and I had taken a group of people to Assisi in Italy which is the home of, of St. Francis St. Francis of Assisi the man for whom the city of San Francisco was named the little uh, a man who lived back in the uh, 13th century, who died at the age of 45, and uh, was the first person to have the uh, the stigmata, the wounds of Christ. And he had to have his hands and his feet bound every night um, for the last two years of his life. And I wrote an entire book based upon the, this famous prayer of St. Francis, which is, uh, you know, where there is injury, let me bring pardon, where there is doubt, faith, where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light. Uh, where there is sadness, joy. In other words, wherever there is anything that is low, op operating at a lower level, let me uh, let me bring a higher energy to it. And he said that in his prayer, you know, for asking for peace. He didn't ask God, please bring me peace. I don't have any peace. Bring me peace. Hand hand me peace. He said, make me an instrument of thy peace. In other words, let me become what you are, thinking like God, which is what this whole business of meaning really is about thinking like God however and that was Einstein's famous observation they asked him about quantum physics he said they're, they're all just details he said I, all I want to learn is to think like God thinks which is an interesting thing well how does the source this all creative energy how does it work how does it think what is it what is it offering and um, so I was in a CC and I took a, I took a group of people there um, <clears throat> maybe 30 or 40 people on a sort of a tour of spiritual places in, 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 uh, in Europe. We went to Rome, we went to Lourdes, and then ultimately we ended up going to, uh, to Assisi. And something very magical happened on that trip. I was writing this book, Spiritual Solution to Every Problem. The night before, I had lectured about it, about St. Francis. I was reading Nikos Kostanzakis's, uh, uh 
a novel about the, the life of St. Francis. I was very, very heavily involved in, in this, and particularly in this prayer, and what it means like as a technology, because I always said the prayer is not really a prayer, it's just a technology.